Smile, you're on candy camera. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Saints Holy of the Ghost Most High. Camera. Saints of the Most High God. Good morning, Facebook family. Good morning, Ask Family, Sister Rose. Good morning. We pray that you're feeling better today. Sister Jasmine, good morning, Brother Donald Alexander. Good morning, Saints of God. Brother Todd Floyd, good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Sister Zatiki. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good to see you guys coming in on this wonderful Word Wednesday. Sister Camille Tyler and Sister Frankie Parker, Sister Cordia Parks, good morning. And praise the Lord to each and every one of you joining us for Acts Ministries Morning Manor. Sister Katasha Bell, good morning. And Brother Chuka, well, King. God bless you guys. Good to see you coming on the feed. Come on yes. in the room. Come on in. Come on in. Getting ready to get some word on this morning, this wonderful word. Wednesday. Good morning, Sister Marcia Ball. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Zatiki's got her ministry on. Sister Rose, good morning. Yes, share, share, share. That's the mandate. That's the ministry for this morning. Get your yes. social ministry on. Start sharing. Start tagging. Start um, letting someone know that Axe Ministries is live and in living color. Thank you, Jasmine. You've got your social ministry on. Minister Sabrina yeah, Lee, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's get this uh, ministry going, this social ministry going. Let's share, 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 share. Sister Rhonda Lee, good morning. God bless you. Sister Sonia Allen Jenkins, God bless you. Good morning. Come on in on the line. Come on in the room for our morning manna. We want you to start your social ministry. Sister Ria Montague, God bless you. Come on in the room. Start sharing. Start tagging. Start um, posting this to your timeline. Start posting this to your friends and family and loved ones and sharing on your Instagram page. And your Sister Deborah Hill, good morning. Sister Sharon Rudell, good morning. Sister Angela Davis, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, saints of the Most High God. Zatiki, you got it going on, girl. Share, 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 share. Let's get this word out to as many as, a pos as is possible. Um, share, share, share. For those who not are not going to your timeline, go on and share to friends, family, and loved ones. Good morning, Sister Audrey. Good morning, Sister Sherry. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good to see you guys coming on in the room this morning, Sister Rhonda Lee. Good morning once again. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We see you guys coming in here strong. Come on in. Come on in the room. Share, share, share. Let's um, continue to get this word out. God bless you, Sister Yvonne Mackey, Sister Eloise McBride. Good morning, good morning, Brother Gordon Miranda. God bless you, sir. Good to see you joining us on this wonderful Word Wednesday. Hallelujah. Amen. Big sis. Good morning, Sister Seal. Love you too. Love you, love you, love you. God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Start sharing with those in your contacts those that you are friends with on Facebook, go ahead and start sharing. Let them know that the Word of God is getting ready to go yes. forth. Sister Loretta yes. Richards and yes. Sister Terry yes. Harris, good morning to yes. you guys. Amen. Sister Annie Britt, amen. God bless you, sis. Good to see you coming on the feed this morning. Amen. 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 Sister Trina Banks, God bless you. Sister Kendra Woodruff, we see you guys coming on in here. Come on in the room. Come on, come on, come on. And start sharing. Start sharing right now. Share with everyone you know. Share, share, share. Brother Wilford Jones, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen, amen, amen. Sister Wanda Foreman, good morning, sis. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen. 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 We see a couple of you guys going in and out. Hopefully uh, it'll pick up and everyone will uh, be able to stay on. Sister Valencia Coleman, good morning. Good morning. Sister Cynthia Torrance, good morning. Good morning. And Sister Lois Watkins, Sister Joy Smith, God bless you guys. Good to see you coming in 
for Wonderful Word Wednesday this morning. You guys know the ministry, Sister Karen Mathis. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Go ahead, you guys, and start sharing. Sister Johnny Harris, good morning, sis. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Sister Betty Hooks, God bless you guys. Sister Pamela Boykin, you guys are coming on in here. Sister Yvonne Mackey, God bless you. Come on in, Sister Olivia Lowe. All right, all right, all right. Brother Clayton Willis, God bless you, sir. Sister Leslie Noble, you guys are coming in from across the country now. All right, God bless you, Sister Hattie Love. Amen. All right, I'm trying to get that name. Brother Herbert Clark, God bless you. All right, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Good to see you guys coming on in here. Amen, amen, amen. amen. All right, almost there. All right, giving you guys a few more minutes to come on in on the line. Um, we'll be continuing from yesterday, part two, as you saw as it popped up in your feed. All right, all right, Sister Dolores Sturgis. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Brother Robert Washington, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen, amen, amen. Sister Jasmine, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, saints of the Most High God. All right, P. Paul Jim. Good morning, Brother Bunty. <laughs> Tamika Smith, God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen. You guys sending up those loves and likes. Amen. We really are thankful to God for you guys joining on this wonderful Word Wednesday. Brother Donald Alexander, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, Amen. good morning. Sister Loretta Richards. Amen. Sister Latoya Daniels, God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Jump into our lesson. All right. It's time for Dana our lesson. Portia Love. Amen. Amen. We're ready to start. Uh, the power of focus. Yes. We talked about that on yesterday. And mm -hmm. the reason why we're still talking about uh, New Year is because we wanted to do something different. Take these first two months to get us focused, to get these first two months of meditation, get us ready for a year. Um, you know, we remember last year. Last year, we had no idea mm -hmm. that the pandemic was getting ready to happen. So every year brings uh, its own set of guidelines and rules. And I don't care how prophetic we are. Just like Eli Elijah said, the Lord has hid this from me. So there's things that the Lord just wants us to be prepared as we move forward. So we're talking about focus focus and we're using we're using uh luke chapter nine so we coming with another breadcrumb this morning another breadcrumb this nine. morning and that's luke nine and hopefully you got a chance to read it and look at the background because you can read it 50 times and every time you read it you can read it for years mm -hmm. and then then open it one day and have a whole another revelation that's the thing about god's word yes. so we got these breadcrumbs and it's up to you to go get the rest of the loaf but in Luke chapter 9, verse 41, the key verse was this. Jesus said, what a generation. Wow. What a generation. Mm -hmm. No sense of God. No focus to your lives. How many times do I have to go over these things? Right. How much longer do I have to put up with this? Wow. Bring your son here. And that's in, that's in St. John chapter, I mean, St. Luke chapter 9, where Jesus is getting ready to heal the, the demoniac, the father's son, who was demon-possessed. The one thing we talked about that was so profound, First Lady, was that Jesus, Jesus is upset in this text, and we have to understand that. He's upset as a leader. He's upset because he has to do their job. Wow. And, and not just that, but this, this young boy is suffering and we know how the Lord felt about suffering. So this young boy is suffering, and, it, and he shouldn't have been suffering. The disciples actually should have cast this demon, should have healed this young boy before Jesus came down. 
this was something that should have been taken care of. You know, Jesus should have never met this father. He should have met, never met this son under these conditions. But Jesus had to come and clean their mess up as a leader because they didn't do what they were supposed to have done. And therefore, they took away from what he was supposed to have done. And that, and that just kind of solidifies that principle what the apostle says. We're going to give ourselves to prayer, uh, to the ministry of the word. We're going to give ourselves to seeking God because that's a full-time job. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a full-time, full-time, yeah. full-time job. Yeah. So uh, Jesus here is just uh, he's frustrated with the disciples. They have the power, but they didn't do it. So uh, we start walking down through the text. And and he he start we start seeing on yesterday why they were struggling to focus. Mm -hmm. You know, we start mm -hmm. seeing yeah. why they were struggling right. to focus. Right. I, I guess we got down to verse fifty. Can we read can we read those uh seven verses and then we'll recap and then we'll go ahead and finish this up today on on uh uh the power of focus. So Pastor has read to us Luke chapter nine, verse forty one. But let's skip down. Let's the jump down Bible. to yes. um, Luke chapter 9, verse 44 through 56. Okay, so if you have it, scroll with us, turn with us, flip with us. Um, get your electronic devices out. Get your Bibles out. Get um, your word out so that you can read along with us. This will be the New King James Version um, for our scripture this morning. We're going to reiterate something that we went over yesterday and then we'll go into the rest of our text for today. Amen. Amen. Good to see you coming in. Coming in strong. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Go on and tag somebody. Post it to your timeline. Yes. All right. Alabama. All right. Got Oklahoma. Got Vangelis K. Um, got you guys. Come on here. Come on. Keep coming. We got Audrey from Tennessee. Come on in. Come on in the room. Come on. Yes. Brother Michael Shaw. All right. Now, you guys, Sister Naray, you guys keep coming. Sister April Parker. All right. Sister Ashley Hardwick. Tim McPhee McBride. All right. Tanisha Gray. Denise Powell. God bless you guys. Y'all keep coming on here. Come on, come on, come on in the room and share. As you come in, share, share this word. Let's get this word out. Let's we're workers together with him in ministry. So let's get this word out. All right. Patrick Carlise Haynes is watching. Come on, you guys. Come on. Keep coming on in this room. All right, Sister Brenda Ames. This is Luke chapter 9. We gave you an opportunity to turn to it with us. 9. We get beginning at verse 44. New King James Version. And it reads. Let these words sink down into your heart, excuse me, into your ears. <laughs> For the Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. But they did not understand the saying, and it was hidden from them so that they did not perceive it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. Then a dispute arose among them as to which of them would be the greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a little child and set him by him and said to them, whoever receives this little child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all will be great. Now John answered and said, Master, we have... We saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. A, this is about a Samaritan village that rejects Jesus in our next passage. It says, now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And when his disciples, James and John, saw that, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, 
you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. The New Living Translation says of verse number 51, As the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Amen and amen to the reading, hearing of God's word on this morning. All right. And just to recap, First Lady, what um, we saw on yesterday, uh, it was two major reasons why they were not focused. One of the things mm -hmm. was they were so focused on who was going to be the greatest. Yes. And, you know, all this adds to uh, the leader, uh, to Jesus' frustration and this young boy staying sick and being tormented because they were not focused. When you're focused, you can do the miraculous. Here, mm -hmm. their focus is on power. They are right. attracted to power. Yeah, these are the ones that Jesus, he chose all 12 of them. We know what's gonna happen to Judas because he never got healed from his attraction uh, to power. We, we know what happened to him. He ended up hanging himself because he, was one of the ones that had another agenda. But here, we, we see that they're so focused on who's gonna be the greatest, mm -hmm. and here's this young boy that is suffering. Wow. And you know, that, that reminds us of this world. I mean, this is selfish. You know, just applicable to our world today that if we're not careful, even in this country, that sometimes the focus is not on helping the people, the focus is not on uh, rescuing people, you know, just mm -hmm. this horrific thing that happened in Texas where a young wow. boy froze to death wow. and all the things that is going on. If, if we're not careful, we won't focus on the needs of the people. And and here, their focus was on who's going to be the greatest. Yes. And, 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 and they knew that this was not supposed to be their focus because when mm -hmm. Jesus asked them, <laughs> he asked them, what was y'all talking about? <laughs> they didn't want to tell Ooh, Jesus. Right. But right. this is so applicable to our day that the focus of the needs of the people. Yes. You know, that we have to make sure that spirit don't creep into the church. Mm -hmm. The focus of the needs of the people, if that's just one. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. that's just one. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus left, he left the 99. 99. He will leave the 99 and get mm -hmm. one. Yes. So, and we, we have to be so careful, so very careful, mm -hmm. that this spirit that, you know, we, we, we look at, uh, what's the majority? How many people are gonna vote for me? I'm gonna make my decision based on, you know, how many are going to vote? That's that's what is happening in our country now. And we look at the disciples. And Jesus is going to break that down for them. Uh, he's going to break that down and let them know, you guys are not like the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Now that, that man, every leader, every leader in the kingdom need to realize that. We don't run the church like the Gentiles run the world. Mm -hmm. The church is a business, but it's, 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 it's unlike any other business. Right. You like cannot it. run it like mm -hmm. you run a business. Amen. And it is not Amen. run by numbers only. Mm -hmm. And and that is so important because mm -hmm. what happens, you do not have, you end up finding, finding out we we have lost the heart of God. Yes. And, and I don't know where they got this from because Jesus is into people. Mm -hmm. He, I mean, he came this far to help uh, the least, the poor, the downtrodden. So here they are. First lady, just 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 recapping this, but here they are. They, you know, we couldn't get, we couldn't heal the boy, but we want to know who's going to be the greatest. You know, and and that's where we are. And we pray that the church would never, never stay in this place. And uh, we and we see in this passage of scripture when we back up some. Jesus had been to the mountain of transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. Now, those nine that got left down in the valley, that got left down at the foot of the mountain, they had an opportunity to do ministry. They had an opportunity to work in the area that the Lord had left them in. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we want to be on the mountaintop with Peter, James, and John when we have valley work to do. Right. We right. have work in the valley. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's many demons in the valley. Yeah. It's lots of work to do in the valley. And sometimes if we're not in the mic, we think that we don't have work to do. Right. If we don't, if we're not on the mountaintop, we think that we don't have um, a place in the kingdom of God. Right, right. But, but they were so concerned about who was going to be the greatest 
and 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 we got left out in this valley yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. we got left down here and jesus only took peter james and john up to that mountain of transfiguration and so we cannot be looking at other people and comparing ourselves one with another whether my work is on the mountaintop or whether my work is in the valley, I've got work to do. And when we say we are workers together, we, we are just that indeed. And so we shouldn't have to have Jesus come down into the valley to do our work that he right. left us to do. Right. Even though Jesus is on the mountain of transfiguration and he's talking with Moses and Elijah about his his um, upcoming death, burial, and resurrection and ascension. He's talking about... He's trying his, to take care of his he's, business. He's trying to take care. <laughs> Jesus, is, Jesus is going to take on the sins of the world. He's getting Jesus. ready to prepare himself to go to the cross. Right. This is a crucial hour and time for wow. Jesus. And Jesus is having to leave the mountain and come down and do what he's left the disciples, he's already given them the power to the power. cast out the demons. He's already given him the power to heal the sick. He's given them the power to preach the gospel. He's endowed them with what they needed to be successful in ministry. But they're so busy and consumed with who's going to be the greatest and, and the big eyes and the little U's and who's, who's going to be called and who's going to sit on the right hand of Jesus and who's going to sit on the left in his kingdom and who's going who's gonna to be seen. Right, right. If we get so consumed about being seen and about our name being called and about us being put up before people and about who's doing what and don't don't concern yourself about what God has called somebody else to do. Right. You just concern yourself about what God has called you to do and do the best job that you can do it being you. You can't right. be Peter, you can't be James, you can't be John. Be you. Bishop used to tell us, be the best you that you can be. Right. Don't try to be a clone of somebody else. Don't try to take somebody else's place that's not, that hasn't been given unto you. Be who God's called you to be. Be, yes. be you, boo. Yes. <laughs> be you, you don't, boo. Because if you don't can't nobody do that, else beat you being you? No, no. And you try to be somebody else or something else. And, and you know, what compounds this, and I'm, and I'm thinking that even in our homes and our daily lives, if we don't focus on what's really important, see that that whole focus is gone. Mm -hmm. The whole focus should be this person is hurting yes. in our homes. Yes, and you see that so often in ministry. This person is hurting, but our the whole family or the, the heads of the families they're focused on something else, mm -hmm. and, and and that is that is that is real hard wrenching. So so here here they are, uh, you know they're they're focused on who's the greatest, but then here here we come. Uh, you know, John, John comes down off the mountain and it's, you know, Jesus took Peter, James, and John. It wasn't because they was perfect, mm -mm, but John, no means. but the thing is first lady, which really helps us, uh, and it helps, helps every leader is that Jesus is going to turn these and these, these 12 is going to be 11. Then Matthias is going to join Judas. Of course, he's going to hang himself because he never, he just, he just never gets it. He just never, he won't get it. Mm -hmm. So he's going to end up hanging himself. But when, when you look, when you look at this, Peter, James, and John, and you look at those other eight men, they turn the world upside down. Mm -hmm. So this is where they are now. And, and, and it's a crucial time. And this is put in here, not for them. This was put in here for us, the church. Mm -hmm. So now they're focused on one thing, but now here we see in verse 49, it says, master, we saw someone casting out a, a demon. Now see that, that would have been the, you know. That, that should have let you see there. We were wrong. <laughs> that that should have been the last thing you should have mm -hmm. been saying. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just looking at a little piece of the uh, Senate uh, confirmation. And, and one of the senators was saying that uh, and they had a big dispute about, they had a big dispute over the person emails. No, 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 the, not emails, that Twitter, what they was tweeting out. They had a huge debate and said they didn't tweet out right and they was being judged, but it's, it's just so amazing. So here, here you you see, you, you, you see they won't do it. They won't use what God has given them, but now they see somebody else doing it. Mm -hmm. That's not part of their church. That's not part of their organization, my, their denomination. My circle, you know, my that, that has nothing to do. These are not, these are not the original ones that Jesus chose. Mm -hmm. So they thought they had a monopoly. Mm -hmm. 
They thought if God, if God's going to do it, he's going to do it through us. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, God is a global God. Mm -hmm. You never hold him hostage. Right. But right. to see to see the mentality here, and this is because they're learning. They don't have the benefit of reading what we're reading. Mm -hmm. But their hearts, they, and they said, they said, we saw somebody casting out a demon. Now, y'all just, you know, y'all couldn't cast them out. Jesus just rebuked y'all. Y'all saw somebody casting one out. And he said, we forbade him because he did not follow us. Lord have mercy. And Lord I, have mercy. And Jesus. I think just to acknowledge that Jesus. they were ignorant to the point that we just were unsuccessful casting this boy, this demon out of this boy when their when his father brought him to them. Right. And then right after that, right after that, they say, We saw somebody else doing it and we told them to stop. We told them to stop. We <laughs> shut them down. We tried to we tried to shut them down. Yeah, quick. we did. And so when we, when we see the irony of this, that a lot of times we decry and decree things in other people that we're guilty of ourselves. Yes. That we, we, we try to put stuff off on other people when really it's us. Yeah. They were the ones who, who needed to be casting out demons and devils. But when they weren't doing it, they didn't want nobody else to do it. And that's a bad spirit to have when you know this is the will of God. You know this is the power of God. You know this is what God has told us to do. But then when you're not doing you get mad at somebody else who is doing it. Right. That's a right. bad spirit to have. Right. And, and so that's kind of like that spirit that Cain had. Cain didn't want Abel to be successful. Right. Cain slew Abel because Abel brought to God what God was requesting of him. And yes. we, we cannot take up that spirit like Cain. We cannot, we cannot take up that spirit where we get mad at other people because they're doing what God told them to do. Yeah, and, 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 and look, at the, look at how Jesus is so different, his opinion. He says, he says, do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. He, sa he said, don't stop them. Don't stop them. You know, that, that, is, that is so profound, and that, that is such an incredible leadership lesson that for all of us, that's a crumb. And if you take that crumb and run it through the Bible, you, you'll add, maybe you'll get a slice of bread. Maybe you can get, you know, you won't get the whole loaf because it's impossible to do that. But just think about that. We're not doing it. We saw somebody else doing it. And I fear, First Lady, that the church is moving into a place like that. I believe the global church. I believe the church is moving into a place where uh, God is God is raising up and God is getting ready to do something. And and we'll be sitting on the sideline. I don't want to be on the sideline saying that's what I was supposed to have been doing. Wow. But, but Jesus wow. and got somebody else because I wouldn't do it. So uh, wow. very, very powerful here. And as we talk about breadcrumbs, we're going to get into these last uh, six verses that we're going to look at dealing with dealing with uh, why why James and John wanted to call fire down from heaven. Now, they just were on the mountaintop. Let's go. Let's go back. <laughs> they were on the mountaintop with Jesus. Now, who did they see on the mountaintop? Yeah, they saw who did who did who? was transfigured on the mountaintop with Jesus. It was both Moses and who? Elijah. And Elijah. Now you have to remember, they just had an encounter where they just saw Elijah. They were on the mountaintop, James and John. The, the Lord's going to call them Boanerges, the sons of thunder. He's going He's going to call them by a new name <laughs> based on their character, based on what they want to do that spirit that they have. But just remember, they just were on the mountaintop with That's Jesus. Such a powerful text. And when they were on the mountaintop with Jesus, Jesus was transfigured before them and uh, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah. Elijah was the prophet who called down fire from heaven on Mount Carmel. He's the one who burned up all the prophets of Baal. He's the one who, who, who you know, who made the fire come down and, and burn up the sacrifice, lick up the water, lick up the dust, burn up the wood and the stones. He's, he's the one that they know is able to, to get the job done. Yeah. <laughs> and so when they approach this Samaritan city and they see that Jesus has sent some of them ahead of him right, to say, right, the Lord right. is coming. Prepare the way for him. He's on his way to Jerusalem. Yes. Make ready, make all things ready for him. And they say, he going where? 
He, this is the place. Remember the Samaritan woman told Jesus, y'all say that we should worship in Jerusalem, but our fathers worship here on Mount Gerizim. We think this is the place where you should worship. So why are you going to Jerusalem when we know that this is the place that you should be worshiping on Mount Gerizim? So they know that Jesus has set his face to go to Jerusalem. They say, uh -uh. We, we're not making no room for him. We're not making any preparation for him. We're not, we not getting anything together for him. And so when James and John so, heard that, when they saw this, woo, they were set on fire for real. <laughs> James and John said this is, and it was wrong. You know, first lady, it was wrong the way, way they reacted to Jesus. We have to get that right. Mm -hmm. And this is what, you know, when we look at this text, you know, it's just so amazing how applicable God's word is. This is what is happening, really. You got this violent part of this violent display of Christianity. People think they're Christians. You know, even when they broke into the capital, once they got into the capital, capital and people's, people's beaten, police died, mm -hmm. they got into that chamber and they started praying. Oh, that, is, that is not the spirit. That is not the spirit of a loving God. That is not the spirit of... Of God. And the word says there's going to come a day where people will um, come after you, persecute you, and think that they are doing the will of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And John them was John them. And, you know, like you said, that was Old Testament. They're stuck. You know, their mind thinking Elijah and Moses. And we know what happened with Elijah and Moses. You know, we, we understand what Elijah did. We see what Moses did. Uh, so, so we see that. But this is a... And it's hard to get that transition. That's what we're trying to talk about Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get people to transition. Mm -hmm. So, From so this is this is this 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 yeah. here. Uh, when we see them, when we see them, and they see what is going on, they got angry. They got mad. And you would think Jesus would be tickled over that. You think Jesus said, you know, they love me. No, Jesus said, hey, you got the wrong spirit. Mm -hmm. Now these these are the inner circle, mm -hmm. and and he he reproved them. He more than anybody else. This is the inner circle. I want, you know. And I think sometimes we think we can, we think that we're the protectors of Jesus, that Jesus, yeah. that Jesus cannot fend for himself, yeah. that Jesus is weak or Jesus is helpless and we've got to come into to Jesus' rescue. And so right. when we when we understand that we don't we don't have to come to his rescue. He comes to our rescue. Right. He is our helper. He is the one who who blesses us. We're not the one, we're not the gatekeepers for Jesus. Right. And right. so he can defend himself. Yes, he says, you know, he's on the cross. He says, I can call for ten late like, you know, twelve legions. Twelve, of, legions, of twelve legions of angels, you know, if I wanted to. Right. You know, I'm I'm no man takes my life. I, I have the power to lay it down I'll and I have the power to pick it back up again. So we don't, we, when we feel like that we have to um, defend Jesus, when we feel like that we have to, we might have to take another look at it and say, hey, you know, maybe Jesus is just saying, take the lower seat. Maybe yes. Jesus is just yes. saying, um, go down in humility. Maybe Jesus is saying, hey, you don't have to defend me. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to try to be the one to, to, be the overseer for me so so they they are they are james and john they are they are trying to protect jesus in, right. in their mind right they're trying to they're trying to you know stand up for him in their mind and so he says but you don't know what spirit, spirit that's not of me you you don't know they yes. they did yes. they really did not know right. that this was not the spirit that the lord wanted them that's to have powerful. because when he taught the sermon on the mount in Matthew chapter 5, he right, says, you know, right. blessed are thou when men shall revile you and persecute you and, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. He says, you know, great is your reward in heaven. He says, you're blessed when this happens. So arm yourself with the like mind that persecution is going to come. Got to come. You know, Paul come. tells us in Timothy, you know, yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution. You can't, you can't it's, escape it's, that. It's, it's, it's a given. When we walk this life, when we count up the cost, we count up the cost, including that in the cost. Yes, yes. And one word that, you know, in verse 51, which is the latter part of, of the text, that one word that is so profound that that it is 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 inclusive. You you have this when you focus, and that's steadfastly. His okay. face was set. Now his face was set, and hopefully, first lady, 
uh, before the week is over, we can, we can start talking about, uh, we can start talking about it and then really uh, focus a little on uh, no focus, no finish. Mm -hmm. No focus, no finish. If you don't focus, you won't finish. All right. People that finished anything in life, they were focused. So no focus, no finish. Jesus, man, he was, I got, I am set. He is going to die for the sins of mankind. He knows what's ahead of him, and he has to be in focus. He, ha he has to have focus because he's getting ready to undergo something that we, we could never even understand. We will never know. We will never know what he paid for us. He, he got his mind set. He's focused on going to Jer Jerusalem. This ain't for a party. You know, the Samaritans understand. He's not saying, I, I don't like y'all. I want to get away from y'all. No. He, he's going he's, to the cross. Yeah. He, he's see, on his way to the cross. And see, now this is this is so important because sometimes we say, they didn't even speak, at me, speak to me. They didn't even look at me. They looked right at me and didn't even say. So you, you have to understand when a person is focused, when Jesus is focused, he's not ignoring them. It's just that he's focused on what God has called him to do. Yes. And, and he has to be focused to get this done because no focus, no finish. So so here, here you, you see him, he focused and, and the Samaritans saw that he was focused. His face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when they saw this, the Samaritans, they responded the wrong way. But this is the key. This is the key. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't rebuke them. He rebuked his disciples because they knew better. See, the world, we shouldn't be surprised by anything the world does. But it is it is the people of God. Jesus was really, really hard on, on the religious people of his day. And, you know, they talk about he hung out with prostitutes and 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 wine bibbers and he hung out with all these sinners and tax collectors and all of this and that's 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 what they exaggerated and talked about him because jesus was reaching out to these people but he was hard on the religious people because you're supposed to know better see the samaritans he didn't rebuke them because what they did was wrong but he rebuked the disciples because you should know better you got the wrong spirit the samaritans we know what kind of spirit they had they don't know god but you supposed to have you supposed you've been with me. You yes, you right, should have you should understand my that's spirit. It. And he rebuked them. That's it. They've been walking with Jesus, living with Jesus, every missionary journey with Jesus, seeing every miracle with Jesus for three and a half years approximately. They have been with him day and night, from sun up to sundown, twenty four seven. They should have taken on his spirit. And when you don't take on the spirit of the leader, when you don't take on the spirit of the exactly. one, the teacher, the master one, the master who's teaching you, then there's something wrong with that picture. Right. And right. so they have seen him deny himself. They have seen him go out of his way to heal people. They have seen him up against the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the doctors of the law who came up against him. They saw how he handled them. They saw how, how he, he didn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. He just gave them a word, he, you know, even when he called them vipers and snakes and, yes, you yes. know, and when he called them hypocrites, you know, when he, when he let them know where they stood, he was basing everything on the word of God, basing everything on the scriptures. And so when we see how Jesus demonstrated that spirit of peace, he's the prince of peace how he demonstrated um, the loving kindness that he had shown for mankind, people that he didn't know, people that he didn't owe anything to, people that he didn't um, even have relationship with. Jesus healed people. He opened blinded eyes. He, he fed people that he didn't have to feed. He did so many things. And you saw the love of God, you know, through Christ Jesus. And so they should have been able to see that same love and be able to demonstrate that even when people didn't receive him. The Pharisees didn't receive Jesus. The, right, the Sadducees right. didn't receive Jesus. The right. doctors of the law didn't receive Jesus. But he didn't go after them. He didn't. Not one of them did he did he blind. Right. Not right, one of them right. did he call fire down from heaven to consume them. Not one of them what did he, he didn't retaliate. When when the Bible says when we are reviled, 
revile not again. That's right. He says, do good unto all men, especially they who are of the household of faith. And when, when he says, love those, you know, who, who despitefully use us, he says, love even your enemies. Love looks different from what, we, what we've what we been accustomed to. The love Absolutely. of God looks different from what we have experienced all of our lives. So he's saying, love them despite what they do to you. And they ask him, do you, Lord, do you want us to command? <clears throat> they just said, we gonna, they said, do you want us to? And he and he went all the way to just where that where that question came from, where that thought came from. It came from that spirit. And and that's the wrong spirit. I'm telling you right now, we're living, we're living in a day and time. We're seeing this. We're seeing this where where hatred and Christianity don't go together. Violence and, and being a child of God, that doesn't go together. Our violence is against the kingdom of darkness. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So, so, so here he, he's transitioning them, and the Bible says Jesus he turned and rebuked them. Wow! Now that's a strong word. This is the second rebuke in a short time. Short period of time, and and mm -hmm. and he is, and the reason why is because he's so focused on going to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and he already said to Peter, because when he when 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 he began to tell him he had to die, Peter rebuked him. And Jesus had to call, you know, said, get behind me, Satan. Speaking to that spirit that Peter was allowing to influence him. Mm -hmm. Get thee behind me. That way of thinking, he says, and this is so powerful. He says, that way of thinking is dangerous to me. And you know what? This it's incident, dangerous to be around that way of thinking. This incident God that you're us. talking about when Peter rebukes him, we're actually at, um, right before he goes to Gethsemane, right before he goes to the cross, when he's washing their feet, when he, when they're having the Last Supper, and he says to them, he says to Peter, you know, I'm going to gird myself with this towel, and I'm going to wash you guys' feet. And and Peter says, no, not not so, Lord. You, you'll never wash my feet. He... This is this is a little while after this, you know, right. that this transpires that we have to understand he still doesn't get it yet. Right, right. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we don't get it the first time. Right, Sometimes right. we don't get it the second time. No. And sometimes we don't even get it the third time. So the Thank Lord has God been patient. Patience. The Amen. Lord has been patient with us, long-suffering long toward suffer. us. <laughs> and, and so he's expecting us to be patient with other people yes. and long-suffering toward other people. Sometimes you can't fix stuff in a day. Sometimes you can't fix stuff in a night. Sometimes you can't fix stuff in even a year. Right. God right. is saying be patient. Be, be long-suffering toward other people because you know what? He's been long-suffering toward us. And these people who have been with him day and night, 24-7, three and a half years, night and day, uh, from sun up to sundown, they still didn't get it. And so he's giving them an opportunity to get it. And he's saying, you got to come on, it's time to speed up now. I'm on my way to the cross. This is this is gonna happen suddenly. This is this is this is not gonna be another three and a half years of this. I need you to get it right now. And sometimes we're in this pandemic and we're thinking that, okay, um, it's going to be over as soon as we get this vaccine. Everything's going back to normal. No, sometimes you just don't get it. He said, it's, it's, it's got to be some changes. It's got to be some, some revolution taking place. It's got to be some speeding up. It's got to be some more prayer going forth. It's got to be some more word that you receive. It's got to be some more devotion, some more dedication, some more sacrifice, some more things that must happen right through here or else this was all in vain. We didn't get the lesson. We didn't learn the lesson. So he's trying right. to help us to learn the lesson right here through this pandemic so that we don't come out on the other side the same way we was when we went in. Right, right, absolutely. And so this is such a wonderful lesson. And just for us as the people of God, for us as leaders to just see uh, how Jesus dealt with the leaders and he dealt with the other people. And so so, so now, you know, he, he's put a lot of effort and energy into them and, and all the effort and energy in, in Judas is, is, you know, Judas was still, Judas still focused on the money. Judas' focus was on getting the money. He wanted the money. And that, that focus is going to end up hanging him. But but these are the ones that, Bible says, those whom the Lord loveth, he what? He chasing it. Mm -hmm. So he corrects. Yes, yes. Now, if, you, if you're going to walk with the Lord and move with him, you have to be willing to accept correction. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, when you look mm -hmm. at Peter, most of us couldn't take what Peter took from the Lord. 
I mean, Jesus, Jesus rebuked Peter more than anybody in the, in the scriptures. You, you look at how Peter was rebuked, you know, because Peter will eat. He, he had a, now see, if you're going to have a big mouth and you're going to say what's, what you think, then you got to be ready for this. Because you're going to set it out open. You need to be ready to take it openly. Yes. And that's what Peter did. Yes. Peter, Jesus didn't, you said this, Peter. I ain't, you ain't going to never do this for me. Okay. Then Jesus said, well, I'm not going to have any part with you. Straight up. If I can, if this can't happen, you're not going to be part of my, my discipleship. And, of course, Peter immediately changes. Not my feet only, my hands mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in my head. He, and, and he, he had a big mouth, but he was so quick to repent. And he learned and he changed and he armed himself with the same mind that Christ had. And that is a mind of suffering. And that didn't come immediately. That, no, quick, to, no that quick to change no was not something that he always had. It, 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 took, it, took, it took the last supper. It took some things that they went through. It took some time for Peter to turn on a dime like that because he didn't start off like that. Peter, and James, Peter James and John didn't start off with the character that they had toward the end. No. God had to work with them. Jesus no, had to work, work with them. And so when the Lord called James and John, Boanerges, Sons of Thunder, he's going to have to be transformed. John is going to have to be transformed into the apostle of love. But he wasn't the apostle of love at right. the beginning. He right. wasn't the apostle of no, love. No, no. He wasn't the one that laid on Jesus' breast, you know, at the beginning. No, no, he no, had no. to grow to that. He yes. had to move and to develop and to to be able to be blessed to go from point A to point B. That didn't come overnight. That was a process, brothers and sisters. You and I have to go through the process. Right. And the Lord is trying to take us through the process, but it shouldn't take us our whole lifetime to go through the process. No, he says, you know, it's time. You don't know what spirit you are. So now that you know that that's the wrong spirit, let's get with the right spirit. Yes. He's trying to say, let's change. Can you change? Is your, to... your name Judas or can you change? Right. And he didn't have to create correct them in this area they grew and the one thing that when, when you know i can see when dealing with peter james and john you know it's like wow jesus why are you taking those three they, they the worst of the they the worst of the 12 they didn't know about judas hidden stuff but they had capacity first lady mm -hmm. those three was right. able to grow yes. Yes. they were not you know when you when you see nathaniel come in and the lord said he says he says and what an israelite indeed mm -hmm. and whom mm -hmm. is what no guile. you know and you you look at the other disciples but Peter, James, and John, they had a greater level of capacity. Uh, Matthew was astute. Matthew uh, had a lot going for him. You know, Matthew financially as, as being a tax collector and all of that. But the capacity of these three men, it is, you know, where they were in life. And then they came in contact with Jesus. And then he was able to stretch. Mm -hmm. so everybody, everybody can't do the stretch. That's yes, why that's you can't put old wine. That's, that, well, I that's mean, some wine skin. Yeah, new wine. The capacity. Into, do, yeah. you, do you have the capacity to move? Do you have the capacity to change? Because they're going from law to grace. And you got to remember, law was entrenched in them. <laughs> law, yeah. that's all they knew yeah. from, from the time they was born to the time they got old. All they knew was law. Yes, All yes. they knew, they, they didn't understand grace. They didn't understand mercy. They didn't understand. And even though there was grace and mercy up under the law, <laughs> they they rather, um, um, what I want to say, major on the law and, right. min and minor on the grace and the mercy. There's always been grace and mercy. But under the law, you have to understand law, You if you... If you offended in one point, you were a debtor to the whole law. And that's going to be the, the whole thing of the New Testament, the struggle of the New Testament that Apostle Paul and Peter and the, the different um, apostles they had in the New Testament was people wanting to go back under the law, not wanting it. to operate in it. grace and truth, not yes. wanting to operate with grace and Main mercy. Thing. So we have to learn how to operate with patience and long suffering and grace and mercy. What doth the Lord require of thee, O man? Yes. But to do justly, yes. to love mercy, yes. and to walk humbly with thy God. He's looking for us to have a heart of of that's tender toward him, that's pliable toward him, that loves the Lord with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, our might, our strength, our being, with everything that's within us, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Do unto them 
as you would have them do unto you. He's saying, I need you to, this is the golden rule. This is where I need you to get. I need you to move from calling fire from heaven down on these people and consuming them. Yeah, because they're weak, because they're wrong. You don't, you don't, you don't do wrong because people are right. wrong. And you, that's like what two we're wrongs, saying. Two wrongs don't make a right. Did your mama ever tell you that? Did your grandma ever yeah, tell you that? Sure two wrongs don't make a right. Because when they came back, they was whooping everything that had been fighting in the house. <laughs> everything was fighting. It didn't matter who started. Everybody Everybody's gonna, in everybody trouble. Everybody that you fight. Everybody's in yeah, trouble. Yeah, he hit me first. Okay, I'm going to hit you last then because so, so uh, you know that, better. That's where turning other cheek comes in. And yeah. I know it ain't always easy. No, but that's it's where, not. But that's, that's, where, that's where turning that other cheek comes into these, play. Yeah, these are, these are, these are, and, and we can get so twisted in that. Man, we can get so twisted, you know, and I think, you know, his, his, there's some history that says that Judas wanted Jesus to overthrow the government. Mm -hmm. You know, there's mm -hmm. there's history, not so much, it's not biblical, but there's history where Judas wanted Jesus to overthrow government. And because Jesus wouldn't use his power to do that, it's kind of like they consider Jesus weak. Mm -hmm. See, meekness is not weakness. No, not and at people all. don't understand that. People don't understand that. You know, they, they still operate in mom didn't raise no food. And, and I'm going to do you and I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. That isn't, you know, over 500,000 people died, have died. We're in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. what, what, this, what we're going through right now in the world, we should be the best examples that we could ever be of Christ. And I think, I think the Lord is moving. He's moving us into a place where uh, he's getting ready to move the true church, the ones that want to go, uh, the ones that want to go. Bishop Jake said, if, if, if you, you, know, you want to go, you know, you got to grow. You know, if you're going to grow, you can go. But if you don't want to grow, you can't go. Mm -hmm. So so here, and, and this is what the Lord says in verse 56. He says, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, right. but to save them. Yes. And they went to another village. You know, he, he gave them word. He said, listen, mm -hmm. that ain't my purpose for coming. If I didn't have to come to destroy the world. I could have just destroyed it. You know, when he destroyed the world the first time with mm -hmm. uh, with the flood, you know, the Lord said, I'll never do that again. I'll never destroy all mankind. Right. So right. so we see that. We see that. That is not his desire. And it's hard. Not, I mean, you know, is 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 if you have God's heart and we have his heart, we have his spirit, mm -hmm. we're supposed to have the thinking of God within us, not to not to feel what people are going through, not to be sympathetic and empathetic and try to help those that are downtrodden, not just the ones that we know, not just the ones that are friends to us, mm -hmm. but to help all. So uh, very, very powerful lesson. So much here that we can't get to all of it. Uh, but uh, we skimmed it as we skimmed. As you come, you always skimming. You're just getting the breadcrumbs. So you got to go and look at that uh, very powerful text in St. Luke chapter 9. And it's not just in St. Luke's chapter 9. It's in Mark and in Matthew. Go look at this text. Examine it. Study it. I'm sure as a disciple of the Lord, you will get something from this text. And I think that's where he's mm -hmm. moving us mm -hmm. from just being church members mm -hmm. to being disciples. Yeah. And I think there's going to be that separation even globally, globally in, in the body of Christ, yeah. uh, discipleship. Uh, they that live godly must suffer persecution. Now, persecution is not, we're not talking about sickness. We're not talking about that. We're not been talking about being buffeted for your own fault. Right. Uh, you know, you, you got you got yourself fired being late, not being on time. You got yourself fired running off at the mouth. He said, if you be buffeted for your own fault, you don't get no your reward. Patient. Take, Take your patience. Patient. We're not talking about that. Take your patience. But we're talking about, we're talking about they that live godly will suffer persecution. Yes. And that is, that great, you know, that's going to be persecution coming, but a lot of that suffering comes from us telling ourselves no. Mm -hmm not so, retaliating so so we we entitled this the power of focus and we we went through a definition on yesterday yes. about focus being um that center of interest of activity and talking about the quality of having or producing that clear visual definition talking about that place where we make it our focal point and some of the ways that we can focus um and, and direct our attention and have that tunnel vision. We talked about um, alleviating and getting rid of the distractions 
that are in our peripheral view telling one thing yes and telling all these other things no we talked about um, some of the proven ways that we want you to remember to keep focus jesus was headed to jerusalem he didn't let what the disciples was doing deter yes. him he didn't let what the samaritans um, would not do deter him no matter what people do or don't do you've got to stay focused and, and let the main thing be the main thing and keep first things first and so some proven ways to help us to focus is we have to identify any distraction in our surroundings and then remove that distraction. What is the what is the distraction? What is keeping us from reaching our destiny? What is keeping us from reaching our Jerusalem? What is keeping us from reaching our cross? What is keeping us from reaching Golgotha? What is keeping us from reaching our destiny? And so when we identify it let's remove it let's get rid of it get rid of the yeast. When, when you find yes a little leaven leaven is the whole lump so since yes. you understand that that you cannot operate with these extra things these extra right. irons in the fire you cannot operate with all these multitasking going on you cannot reach your destiny you cannot get there with all this other stuff that you must get rid of then that's the point where when you identify it, let's get rid of it. You, you say, I want to lose weight. I want to I wanna trim down. I want to get rid of this bad thing. Well, well, get rid of those cookies. Get rid of all that candy. Get rid of all that Coke. Get rid of all that ice cream. Get rid of all that stuff yes. that you know yes. is deterring you and derailing yes. you from losing that weight. Get rid of all that stuff get that you... Get Get rid of all that stuff that you know is derailing your goal, yes. derailing your destiny. And then once you get rid of it, train your willpower muscle. Be Start saying no. Start practicing saying no. And then when you say no, let your no mean no. Let your no mean no. Stand on it and don't back <laughs> off of it. Practice training your willpower muscle. You, you're in control. Let the strong man be the strong man in your house. Yes. Tell yourself no. Let the spirit of God arise in you and be able to say no. Absolutely. No, absolutely not. No. And then when you begin to train your willpower, then begin to meditate on things. Begin to think on things that are lovely, true, good yes. report. Bring that word in. You got to think on the way that you want to go. Meditate on that way. Train your mind. Meditate. Train that muscle. Train the mind, the muscle mind. Train yourself and meditate on it so that you can begin to focus like never before. Because when your mind, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Yes. You begin to think about anything and everything. Have you ever got down to pray and you were supposed to be focusing on prayer, but the devil start bringing all these other things that you needed to do and, and where you needed to be and what you didn't do and how? Yes, Brother Chuka, mind management. Manage, manage your mind with meditation. That's I like good. that. Manage your mind with meditation. This is how you're going to be able to focus on where God is trying to take you. And as you begin to meditate on it, do one thing at a time. Don't try to do it all at once. Right, right, right. First things right. first. You know, as we begin to continue to read down in this passage of Scripture, when we get down to verse number 59 in the Message Bible, it says to, to us in verse number 60, Jesus refused. First things first, your business life, not death. Life is urgent. Announce God's kingdom. He says, put the first things first. Don't right, be right. don't be consumed and, and, and you know embodied with, with all this other stuff. But put yeah, first things right. first. Set your affections on things above and not on things that are beneath on this earth. Get your affections on God. Get it on your goals. Get it on your destiny. Get it on the kingdom of God. Seek ye first. Kingdom of God. Seek ye first. Kingdom of God and his and righteousness. And his righteousness and all, all other things. things will be added unto you. Brothers and sisters, you and I must focus. Yes. Focus, focus, focus. We'll I, and this that. ain't no this ain't no hocus pocus. We talk about focus. Right. Okay. You yes. got you got, got to home focus. in. You've got no to home shortcut. in. Yes, no, no, shortcut. no shortcut to, the, to your destiny. Something. No so, shortcuts to to the goals that God so has. We want to really, your, we want to really talk about that. No focus, no finish. Mm -mm -mm. We gonna we maybe dive into that, uh, you know, tomorrow. But that is that is so good. That is so good, and and just find ways to focus. So I think some people were screaming out. I saw a few faces screaming out as we was going up. 
Oh, he started talking about those cookies and cokes and uh, <laughs> getting all that out of the house. Like, yeah. yeah, I thought I saw Cap on there. He was screaming. It, it, it ain't going to yeah. happen until you make it happen. Yeah. Do you hear me? It's yeah. not going to happen until you make it happen. He has given unto us the, the, all thing. powers, all things that pertain to unto to life, life and godliness. And he has godliness. equipped us with what we need. But brothers and sisters, it's not going to happen until you make it happen. Yes. We we are workers together with him, but he's not going to come down and do our work for us. No. no he came no. down from the mountain and did it for the for the disciples. He did their work for them and he was frustrated with them. Yes. I don't want God to be frustrated with me right. when he has given it unto me and placed in my hands the yes. ministry of reconciliation. He has placed in my hands the power, the dunamis, the dynamite. He has given it unto me and he expects me to use it for his honor, for his glory, that his name might be praised for the kingdom, the uplifting of the kingdom of God, for the building up and the edifice edification of the saints of God. Yes. He has placed it in our hands. So we better get busy, brothers and sisters. We better be about our father's business because the night is coming when none of us can work. Right. The Lord is looking for us to be about our father's business and we want to be like Jesus. We want to always do those things that please the please father. Him. Okay? God so focus. So focus this focus, week. Focus, focus, focus. Won't you, hear, won't you hear that in your sleep? Focus, focus, yeah, focus. Huge. When focus. you wake up in the morning, focus, focus, focus. When you're eating your lunch in the, in the when you Focus. Eating your dinner, focus, focus, focus. It's the only way you're gonna be able to do the miraculous. When, when the washing machine is in 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 play and it's on, I want you to hear focus, focus, focus. When you when you lay down at night, when the clock uh, makes that sound, I want you to hear focus, 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 focus. Yes. We want you to hear focus from morning, we noon, and night. To. Focus because. To. This new year that we're in, this yes. sign is not up for no reason. We need you to, for the beginning of this year to focus, focus, focus. Because if you focus, you can do the miraculous. If right. you focus, you can do the impossible. Yes. When you focus, God can use you. When you focus, you can do what he says you can do. You can be who he says you can be. And you can say what he tells you to say. Focus. focus no focus. focus. No finish. All right. We'll talk about that later. God bless you. We love you. We thank you for joining us on this wonderful Word Wednesday for this morning manna. We thank you for sharing. Don't forget, if you haven't already, share, share, share. Push that share button. Tag somebody. Text somebody. Um, share to your page. Share to your timeline. Share to your WhatsApp. Share to um, everybody. Share, share, share. This is this is social ministry. We are in ministry together. We are partners together with him. So we're admonishing you to continue to share, continue to let somebody have this word because they need to focus. They need to They need to have tunnel vision. They need to have dove's eyes. They need to be able to see what God is saying unto the church. Amen. 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 Continue to connect with us at AxMinistriesOnline.org. Continue to send in your prayer request at Ax, uh, uh, Ministry. Send it to this email address, the email address is wtebroadcast at gmail.com. We'd love to connect, touch and agree and pray with you in prayer, believing that God will do the miraculous on our behalf. Um, keep in mind that this is Wonderful Word Wednesday this evening at 530. We're coming on that Zoom live for our reading through the Bible class. We're in lesson eight. You don't want to miss it. Come on in, join us. You say, well, I don't have a book. You still can join us. We should be sending out that Zoom link once again, one hour before um, we go on Zoom. So since we go on at 530, you should receive a mass text from Ask Ministries for the Reading Through the Bible class. We're looking forward to you joining us today at 530. And once we get off at 630, we're going to switch over quickly to Facebook Live for our anointed Bible class. You don't want to miss that on tonight. Yes. So join us tonight for Wonderful Word Wednesday. And then on tomorrow, join us on that prayer line. Focus. Focus. Get your life back in focus. You know, sometimes we say, um, this my life is out of whack. My you know stuff is not going the way it's supposed to go. Get on that prayer line. Start your day off right. Seek him early. Join us at five thirty Central Standard Time on that prayer line so that you can focus for the rest of the day. Amen. Um, Friday millennials, join us on that Zoom call on um, the millennial roundtable 
on yep, Zoom. Come unmute yourself at 8 p.m. on Friday evening. And yes, yes, we want right. you to remember that um, this coming Saturday, the singles have a game day on Zoom. And I believe it's 1 p.m. You don't want to miss that. Join the singles ministry as they come and have some good old-fashioned fun on that Zoom for game day. Um, that's this coming Saturday. They will be sending out that link. If they haven't already sent it out to the singles, you will, you will be receiving the Zoom link so that you can join the singles for game day this coming Saturday. And um, don't forget on Sunday, we are live streaming for both Conway and North Little Rock, for the entire world, country, um, all, everyone, we will be doing our morning worship at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday on Facebook Live, YouTube, and Axe TV. So join us there. Join us there. Join us there. Now, those of you who have a commentary, you, you Christian education mm -hmm. commentary, you realize that we're getting ready to get out of that commentary. It's time for our new commentaries. We, listen, we need you to call the office ASAP, email them, and let them know that you want a commentary. Those commentaries, I believe, if you pre-order, are $15. If you don't pre-order, they will end up being $19. So we need you to call the office in, in Conway, 501-329-2055. <laughs> Three two nine two zero five five. Call the office um, immediately. As soon as you get off this link, go ahead and do it now because we need to pre-order those books um, ASAP. We will be coming out of this quarter um, before we know it, and we need to go ahead and place the order so that we can get the order back in on time. So um, everyone, everyone needs a Christian education book. We're looking forward to coming back into in-person services you still will need that book right so as Whole many year. It, it's a commentary is for it's the best way to go yes. and uh the best way to go and it's, it used, it's actually, the most economical yeah most and, economical way and, to go and, too and you have it for over a year so we're looking for you to definitely definitely uh do that and don't forget sarah to all ministers and all deacons uh we're going to be uh on zoom uh We'll be on Zoom so we can uh, discuss some things um, and get some things done. What so time? very important. Uh, I, I'm think eight o'clock, eight o'clock on Saturday morning on Zoom. Uh, one of the few me meetings that we've had. So we want all the ministers. If you say you're a minister of Acts, uh, that's fine. If you know, so we want you to come and be on there. Uh, we're looking forward to getting in, in person. Uh, meetings and where we can spread out over the whole sanctuary but until then we got to use the only thing that we got so we have to use what we got right now so uh yeah so order those those um commentaries christian education sunday school commentaries um call immediately after this zoom yes, is, after this yes, facebook live yes, is over call the yes. office and order those put your order in your pre-order in for your sunday school commentary Amen. and um you'll look for that link for not only the singles but look for that link for the ministers and deacons for this coming saturday Amen. and um, we look forward to you joining us um, sunday morning and sunday evening for our christian education class god bless you god keep you god make his face to shine upon you be gracious unto you and give you his peace on today this wonderful word wednesday have a beautiful and wonderful day we love you amen god bless you